Next presenter, Dr. Prasanna Venkatesh, who will be presenting on 3D printing ophthalmology related models. And Dr. Kumar J. Doctor will be the discussant. Uh, good morning, everyone. So, mine is uh, going into pedagogy, that is basic sciences. So, we have inculcated 3D printing to actually print basic structures that you can see me holding in my hand, such as normal anatomical structures. So, for me, when I was a resident or when I was trying to imagine something, structures which are very cognitively difficult to understand, like uh, the, intra uh, the intracranial structures, like the circle of willis, cavernous sinus, which we don't tend to dissect in our medical curriculum. So, how can we work on these kind of structures to facilitate critical thinking and coping skills so that the learning is much more fast forwarded rather than a lot of imagination and theoretical cognitive frameworks. So what we started doing was we did do a lot of augmented reality work but we felt nothing like real touch and sensation as you can see the models here. I'll be showing you my uh, cavernous sinus models as well. So these are models which we actually printed which I'll be circulating. So this my dear friends, gives you the real models of touch and print. So when we browse the literature, there was nothing which was actually printed in 3D. 3D printing was used for many other innovations in ophthalmology, but a simple basic science such as a toys and puzzles that the children used to play to improve the intellectual language was never applied in ophthalmology for basic sciences. So we went ahead, we sat the anatomy, we read, we read the anatomy in Cunningham's, we made sure we did the 3D orientation, we use the Cura software because in 3D printing, when you are printing a very, very tiny structure, it's very difficult, it tends to easily break. So we started collecting, uh, we started meticulously planning these structures so that they don't break when we print in a form of a toys. Even the eyeball model has been printed. Ajay, can you give me the eyeball model? So we use Fab Excel and Fab Plus printer. Depending on the structures, the cavernous sinus was slightly printed larger and the polylactic acid material was used and we also printed our own eyeball model. I'll just tell you why this is different from the models that is currently available in the market. Uh, actually, you can see that we can also color the models accordingly to the whatever color that we want them to represent like the circle of willis that you see which is red in color and the cavernous sinus which is blue in color along with the transverse and sigmoid sinuses and we also upgraded our model to the second protocol the first model was more of horizontal this is the second prototype circle of willis model which you can see the endings and the bendings are much better compared to the other models and then we also had our own eyeball model where we had the retina with thermopolyurethane. You can see it squeezes. The sclera and the choroid is more rigid with thermopolyurethane. And this squeezes so that you can use any fundus image and you can make sure you can train the patients in laser. You can show different pathologies. like Just like an automobile engineer, can we also have the eye dissected in different structures in multiple colors, which is a simple and basic idea. But it is also very, very cost effective, my dear friends, which literature has never reported. So you can start collecting your own eyeball models with different kind of color funders, autofluorescence, infrared, and have your own toolkit printed so that this may help the neophytes and the beginners to cognitively orient into the structures as well. And you can see that we have launched this in our uh, startup and this is openly accessible in our website www.org.in and it is very cost effective. It is 200, 200 and 1000 for all the three models and it takes just a day to print. So this, my dear friends, I feel will be the future of ophthalmic pedagogy. So we have also Extensive, we are working on a full, fully fledged puzzle model where can we have all the cranial structures like a puzzle and have it as a product so that we can sell it so that the neophytes can actually assemble the puzzles just like an engineer and can have no blind spot regarding the neuroophthalmology, which will be a much better way and a much simpler way of learning and teaching and counseling. Thank you. impressive uh, work that you've done and I'm also impressed that your cost effectiveness is yes, very very good so this is different from the other 3d learning that you were sh showing right yes sir we when we started doing uh, I'm basically into augmented reality sir I do a yes. lot of apps in the phone yeah so when when we started doing a lot of applications and when we did a lot of road shows the feedback that we started getting from uh, the teachers in ophthalmology is, yes, technology is good, but can you give me something that I can really feel and touch? Mm. Because in augmented 
reality it was more virtual and yeah. more tech savvy yeah. so the when the senior teachers told that they wanted something to really feel in reality so we shifted our idea towards reality so that we started printing models sir so once we made the template now if anybody wants to get a model it's easily done so to print one it takes you said it takes a day yes and the eye ball you... takes 36 hours sir one and a half days mm. the cavernous sinus takes around 12 hours the circle mm. of willis takes 15 hours sir so you created your own lab to do all this or yes, you outsourced yes we have our it? own startup sir i created my own startup Very it's good. called uh, mahatma center of moving images uh, private limited and we have registered the startup and this is also a patent also has been uh, filed for this provisional specification very good congratulations yeah, it's www.mcmi.in is the link if any one of the people type here you can see all the www.mcmi.in mahatma center of moving images yes congratulations sir. thank you sir. thank you best. this is a wonderful thing would you start labeling them is it possible to label them in black ink or something yes sir just like the batman and superman toys that come in the market now we are we are developing a package and it'll all be allotted like this and we are developing a cursor so that they can click click on it with a simple like a toothpick like a toothpick anterior communicating artery anterior cerebral artery internal carotid artery so in viva oc or in exams tomorrow just like how the skull is given and told to point out the foramen ovale foramen rotundum the teachers can actually give them a model like this and and can tell them can you point out uh the circle of willis structures it can all be done in a much easier for way for educational purposes would you label them and and um, market them so we have labeled them sir hmm. because of the portability and other things i just brought all the three models the packaging is there just like a toy that we all buy uh, when we were kids that superman and batman exactly we have packaged them like that along with the labels it's like a toothpick with the heading on top just like the candles that we use for the birthday so the labeling is also worked out great that will yeah. be very nice just last yes, question sir. So, to the best of my knowledge, I think uh, the anatomy bones are already available, which are three D printed, and they are all labeled, and these are available in the market. So, bones was relatively easier to print because mm-hmm. in three D printing, the fragility of the structure is what makes it more difficult when we print structures like this. In the first prototype circle of Willis model, we were not able to crack it because as we go towards the periphery, the edges were getting more thinned and the models were breaking. Yeah, yeah. So, these kind of models were very difficult to print because these are all veins and arteries. and eyeball bones are relatively easier to print so the coding and the anatomy learning had to be more precise yeah. when printing arteries and veins sir, so which is more difficult a little move forward the world yes. is moving towards 3d printing of the corneas so 3d printing of the cornea has two parts sir one is which for would... one is bio printing is something that is the real frontier so we are slowly taking baby steps towards that also Correct. so this is something that we have started at the end we would definitely like to end up with bio printing sir yeah yeah congratulations thank, thank you sir thank you Thank you.